messages and planned terrorist attack online. Over the weekend, British Prime Minister Theresa May called for tightening internet regulation. G7 nations are also pressuring tech companies to purge extremist content. A leading computer scientist who created an algorithm to detect and block child pornography, which was utilized in works, now claims he has created a similar algorithm to detect and block extremist terrorist content, such as tweets or video messages from ISIS. So why are Twitter and Facebook and Google and others not using it? Joining me now to discuss this is Dr. Hani Farid. He's a professor at Dartmouth College and a senior advisor to the Counter Extremism Project. Uh, doctor, thanks so much uh, for joining us. So you say your mechanism, eGlyph, can detect and block extremist content in the same general way we combat malware and, and child pornography. I explain how it works. Right. So the way we dealt with the child pornography problem back in 2008, 2009, is we realized that we have this huge stash of known child pornography images, and we know that that content continually gets redistributed. So what we do is we reach into those images and we extract out a distinct digital signature, very much like human DNA, and that signature is stable over the lifetime of the medium. And so what that means is that we can sit at the pipe of a Facebook, a Twitter, a YouTube, or a Google, and every image, every video, every audio recording that comes in, we grab its signature, we compare it to a database of known bad content, and we filter it out. And we do that, by the way, with malware, we do it with viruses, we do it with spam. We have mechanisms to filter out things that we know are harmful to the Internet, and we simply have to deploy the technology at this point. So you have offered this mechanism for free to top tech companies, Google, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, Microsoft, but we're told they have yet to use it. Now, we reached out to the companies today. They told us they're using their own tools as well as working amongst themselves. Do you think what they're doing now is enough to stop the spread of this potentially terrorist content? Yeah, it's a good question. We just saw a report from the EU uh, last week that showed that more than 50% of the reports for takedown notices to these companies are not being satisfied. So if they have technology to solve this problem, why is the content so easily available? So I'm not buying the story. If the technology is there, fantastic. If it's our technology, somebody else's technology, we don't care. This is not a money-making adventure. We want to develop technology that, that allows the Internet to be open and free and accessible while mitigating the harm, and I don't think that they are doing enough uh, to mitigate the harm, and we're seeing that in a very real way. But your technology was used and works to combat kitty porn, to, co to combat that horrible epidemic of child pornography. Why would they not take your algorithm for free as you're offering and, and use it to try to stop this problem? I think that's the right question to ask, and I don't have a good answer for that. I mean, we have been asking these companies for years, for decades, to do more uh, to mitigate the harm of what's happening on their network. I can tell you in the child pornography case, it took years and years and years of pressure. It took years and years of pressure from the legislators, from advertisers, from the media, and from the public for them to act. Left to their own devices, they don't want to filter out this content. It is not in their interests. So I think it's incredibly important that we keep having these conversations because I think it's frankly not in their financial interest to do it. Their entire business model leverages user content. Taking down content is bad for them. And I think it's really as simple as that. And without external pressure, we saw the same we see the same things playing out in the extremism space as in the child pornography space. They simply won't act until they are forced to. And so you think the pressure needs to come from the public and from from public officials, perhaps. Right, and you saw this. You saw this a few weeks ago when advertisers fled Google en masse because Google was not doing enough to control the way people's advertising were being uh, uh, pushed online. And what did Google do in response? They said, oh, we are going to develop technology to do this. Okay. So they knew the problem was there before, but they chose not to do anything about it. Dr. Hani Farid, thank you so much. Really appreciate it. That's it for The Lead. I'm Jake Tapper. I turn you